it's me Alana welcome back to my channel the awkward book nerd this is part two of my July wrap-up in case you don't know my part one should have already been posted I read 12 books in the month of July so I decided to split up my wrap-up because I didn't want it to be super long and I didn't want editing Alana to hate me and I didn't want you guys to hate me for watching these super long videos so I decided to split them up also I'm sorry in advance for the construction noises people are building houses and it's annoying so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into these books. Most of these books are books I read for the Book Junkie Trials, The Reading Rush, and my summer TBR. So I will let you know which books go to which. Actually, I think my earlier wrap-up video had all my Book Junkie Trials books. So this one should have my Reading Rush and still July TBR books. So fun times. All right, so first book, well, not the first book, but like, first book in this part two wrap up is What I Lost by Alexandra Bracken. This was part of my summer TBR. I gave this a four out of five stars. This is essentially about a girl who has an eating disorder and so she, her parents basically enroll her into a um, inpatient program at this hospital and there she kind of learns why, like what it was that kind of sparked her eating disorder and like how to maintain it. I don't want to say control, but like how to like get better and accept the fact that this is something she probably will struggle with for the majority of her life. I enjoyed it for what it was. Like I liked that this handled eating disorders well. It was very honest to like where you may not always cure this like there's no specific cure and sometimes it's something you are probably going to struggle with for the rest of your life and sometimes you have relapses and i loved that this was very honest about that i loved that it was her like basically focusing on herself and on the relationships in her life and on why she needs to have this control another thing is that um she it this book's the story touches on the fact that her mother also has an eating disorder so I love the fact that it focused on the fact that sometimes there is a cause and sometimes it's your environment like your parents or friends or a boyfriend or something give you this idea that you need to look a certain way or be a certain way in order to be in control or feel accepted or loved and that was one thing that was touched upon in this her mother um, also kind of struggles with unhealthy eating habits and I wish that it would have focused on that a little bit more because of the fact that it just felt like they mentioned it and then they like were kind of working on it and then they just didn't really mention it again especially when she came back home because I feel like what if she had seen like her mom like accepting this and like kind of trying to work on it maybe she, it would have made the process easier like I'm not gonna have to say for sure because I've never struggled with an eating disorder before so I definitely don't want to talk out of place or make assumptions or anything like that the other thing is that there is a boy in this who kind of represents like the thoughts that maybe people who have never dealt with eating disorders before have where he's like well why can't you just eat normal like why can't you just do this and I wish that would have been combated because he did it he said it and like I know why he said it because it was like a representation of what the outside world thinks but she never really got a chance to like talk about it or like express her opinion or express her thoughts or like show him why like these questions that he's having are not okay so i wish that was a thing the other thing was that same boy like he technically was the love interest kind of not really i got a little annoyed with him at the end because he was like you could tell he was interested in her and she was kind of interested in him back and he was like well will you like go out with me and she was like no because like I'm struggling like I just got out of the hospital I want to focus on myself I want to focus on my eating and make sure that I'm doing this right before I add any other variables into my life and he kind of just got an attitude with her in the beginning and it was kind of annoying because I was like okay you definitely know that this is something that she was working on why are you getting annoyed when she says no like just accept it and move on and like eventually he did accept it but it was just a little annoying that he did that so definitely not my favorite part Alright, so the next book I read was When Life Gives You Demons by Jennifer Honeyborn. I read this for my summer team or as well. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. I I thought this would just be better than it was. It just wasn't very good to me, I guess. I don't know how to describe it. Like, it was okay. It's essentially about a girl who is living with her uncle, who's a priest, and he's basically teaching her how to be an exorcist. And her mother has like been gone for a while and so she thinks her mom's abandoned her when really there's like more to the story. And 
I thought this would just be funny, like a, like a, maybe a, like a humorous contemporary type fantasy book, but it was just kind of boring, honestly. Like, I, I guess I liked the main girl. Like, she's a little stubborn, and it was a little annoying that she like wasn't listening to anybody majority of the time, especially people who maybe had more knowledge than her. The love interest, he was annoying because he like, okay, so he transferred to the school to get close to her because he like was trying. He's an exorcist or a demon hunter as well. And then he gets mad because she didn't tell him that she was an exorcist. It was a whole thing. I was confused because I was like, why are you getting mad, bro? When, like, you basically were getting close to her to two. I don't, it was a whole thing. It was weird. Yeah, it was just an okay story. I don't really have many thoughts on it because I just thought it was just whatever. But another thing I didn't like was just that it was just kind of predictable. It just, it felt like a surface level story. Like, I didn't really get to dive in deeper with these characters. I felt like, I just didn't care. Like, it didn't give me a reason to care, honestly. I feel like this would have maybe worked better as like a movie or TV show than a book, to be honest. The next couple of books are books that I read for The Reading Rush. So, the next two that I read were Sagas Volume 3 and 2. I know I said that backwards, but well. I gave these 5 out of 5 stars. I read these for a book to read in one sitting and a book that features a non-human main character. I like am enjoying this story. I am enjoying where it's going. It's very interesting. Sometimes the gore kind of gets to me so I have to take a break because I'm like that's a lot of blood and stuff but for the most part I am like excited to continue on in the series and learn more about it and kind of see how it goes. Especially because like I know the whole point like the narrator is their daughter so I'm like how did like what happens up to this point that she's narrating the story kind of thing so all right the next book i read was all we could have been by t.e carter i gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars okay, so the one thing i liked about the story is that it focused on grief and trauma um because it's essentially about a girl whose brother commits a murder like a really it says heinous act but you kind of get the fact that it's a murder um he murders these people and he goes to jail so and this happened when she was 12 so she's like 17 now so she since then she's been moving from family member to family member to family member um transferring to new schools because every time she gets to a new place someone finds out about a brother and then they basically spend the rest of the year trying to condemn her for her brother's actions um i like the fact that in the story it is like kind of the point is her differentiating herself from her brother like she's not the reason why her brother did this she cannot control her brother's actions she's not the reason why like like she does not have to take responsibility for who her brother is and who her, what her brother did and i love that that was the focus of the story because it seemed like every time someone like found out they like tried to condemn her for it like like oh you're obviously his sister so you're just as crazy or you're just bad or you have the same blood or whatever you're gonna kill someone next and it was just kind of ridiculous but like also i understand the fact that these are thoughts people really really have so that was definitely interesting to read about. Um, for the most part, the characters were okay. I think my favorite was Marcus because he seemed to accept her for who she was. I struggled, struggled a lot with Ryan, who was one of the guys that she met at school, who was just like kind of her really, really good friend because of the fact that I just felt like he, he was really selfish, but I understand why he was selfish, but it still bothered me that he was selfish. So the one thing, okay, so it doesn't really say it for sure, but I think Ryan is an asexual character where he just doesn't, and I'm sorry if I said this wrong, I, please correct me in the comments if this is like my lack of understanding and I definitely want to understand more. In the book he says he's just not very interested or attracted in people, like he just, whether it's a girl or a guy, he's just not interested and at the beginning of the story he lets people believe that he's dating the main girl because uh, it's just easier than explaining that he just does not have sexual attraction to anybody and it was very hard like reading, like because I wanted to like him, but it was hard because of the fact that as soon as people found out about her brother, he distanced himself from her because he didn't want them to connect him to her and like find out his secret. And it was just like, I understand, but it was just still frustrating because I was like, you're supposed to be her friend. And like, she could have really needed you at the moment. And then at the end, he kind of just came back and like was hanging out with her in secret at the end of the book and it still bothered me. I really, really hate that. Like, 
yeah I just have mixed feelings about it because I, I understand I really really do but I hate it because like I just if you're gonna be friends with someone just be friends with someone it I literally don't like that like where you're like oh I can't be friends with you in public but I, I can I could totally hang out with you in secret as long as it's outside of the town limits and all that kind of stuff and I'm like no <laughs> that's not how this works I I'm a little disappointed because I was expecting more from this but I guess that was my fault for having too high expectations but I don't know if I'm gonna get rid of this one yet or not but we shall see all right, now we're towards the end. The last book that I read in the month of July was That Summer by Sarah Dustin. So this one and then the All We Could Have Been, I read those for the reading rush. All We Could Have Been was for a book with over five words in the title and this one was for a, an author's debut novel. This is Sarah Dyson's debut novel. I gave this a three out of five stars. Um, I honestly gave it a star, an extra star because it's Sarah Dyson. <laughs> I know that's bad, but I don't care at this point. It's my book. It's my reading. I... This, you can tell, is a debut novel. I will say that. I am so glad her books get better from here. Because this was just not the greatest thing ever. It was really slow. It didn't really have a plot to it. It didn't really have a conflict or a conflict resolution to it. And it just... It was just boring. And... Honestly, the relationship that she had with the sister's ex-boyfriend was a little inappropriate. But that's like all I can really say. If you want more thoughts, I will link my Reading Rush vlog up there because I literally said all of my thoughts in that video. So you should totally watch it. Sorry, skip to the end if you don't want to watch the whole thing. Um, but yeah, this was just an okay read. Wasn't the best. I buddy read this with Carrie and Haley, and they kind of felt the same way, so that's fun. I think we might read more Sarah Bus Dustin books together, so I'm excited for that. We have our own little like group chat. That's really cool. So the one thing I did like, or the the few things that I did like, was the sister relationship at the end. It seemed like it got kind of better, which I enjoyed, and I liked the fact that so she references uh, the Lakeview girls. Like this is the first book, obviously, so this is the first time she references it, and I like that within her books she always references something from like within the same world so just listen the main girl is part of the lakeview girls or she was so i i just like that it like connects i guess so that's fun all right so those are all of the books that i read in the month of july this is the end of part two if you like the video go ahead and like it down below if you guys have any comments on any of the books whether from part one or part two that i read please comment them down below if you guys are not good at commenting i'm gonna go ahead and say leave me an emoji down below i'm stealing the idea for my friend sylvia for most fulfillment and if you guys want to keep seeing more videos from me please subscribe down below you guys are all awesome flowers in a world full of weeds.